we can now start. So, I am going to continue from where we left over in the last class, right. So, we talked about plate bending and the mechanics aspect of it was probably trivial for you, you have seen these things before. Uh, the part where we had stopped was very close to where we are now saying that okay, I have a bent plate, we talked about how you can measure the bending of the plate rather how do you measure the curvature and now we are going to discuss today the thing that we are going to discuss is how do you relate it to stresses in the film, what do you do if you have not one but multi layers of films and what are the assumptions that you are making which you should be a little careful of. And these assumptions are important because I do not know whether I explicitly asked you in the first tutorial also where you are calculating the strain due to differential expansion between film and substrate. To solve that also you are assuming that all the adjustment is being done by the film, right. You are saying the substrate adopts whatever is equilibrium as per its alpha, but that would be a function of how thick the film is, how thick the substrate is and how stiff the film is and how stiff the substrate is, right. Uh, can anybody venture a guess as to if I asked you to solve it absolutely precisely with no assumptions, how would you solve for the equilibrium dimensions of two layers stuck to each other and uh, trying to adopt different lengths. I, if I say find out the equilibrium length of this two layer system, how would you solve it? No simplifications. Think and I'll I'll come back to that, okay? And and it is somehow related to the kind of things with film and substrate that we've been talking about. The answer or the clue lies in here, okay? So this is what we are going to do: uh, calculate stresses in a film from measured curvature. What are the assumptions involved? And then extend this to well, if you don't have one film, if you have multi layers on top of each other, then what happens? So, I had already showed you this slide last time, I am repeating it this time that we started out here, right? We said that look, I derived an expression for strain in terms of what strain was related to 1 over r, where r is radius of curvature. And stress was related to what? M. I am not asking you for the functional form, even though even that is in front of you. M and substrate thickness, something else and curvature, right? And substrate thickness. Okay. And then we said that well, I already have a relationship between stress and strain from isotropic elasticity. So, now I am going to just put this whole thing together and see what I get, right. So, we said look, if it is biaxial loading, which is what I expect in an isotropic plate which is bending, then I have this relationship. Strain which varies as a function of y, y is thickness direction is related to stress which also varies as a function of y is related to it by the biaxial modulus which you have derived already. Okay. So, now we plug in the expression for stress that we had derived uh, and we then say that okay, in which case <coughs> I know this, if I bring the y here this from the previous expression is related to the curvature. So, finally, I have a relationship between curvature, a quantity which I can measure experimentally, the plate thickness or film thickness or substrate thickness as we are going to say, elastic properties of the plate or the substrate and m. And the part where we had stopped was that what is this m, where is it coming from? And we said, well, m is coming from the stress in the substrate, right? This is, we had done this and I am repeating this also that 
in my thought experiment I have a stressed film or I have a film whose dimensions do not match up with the dimensions of the substrate. So, I am stretching it, sticking it on the substrate and when I let go that external force which was pulling the film is gone, right. So, that has to be balanced by a force which is acting on the substrate, this plus this gives me 0. The film substrate package is at equilibrium with each other, sigma f equals 0, right. And that because this force is acting at the top surface of the substrate, I only have a film deposited here, a thin film deposited here, this causes the substrate to bend and that is what we will do now, ok. So, why does it cause the substrate to bend? What is this force? So, the force acting on the film per unit length, right. Remember all of these things were per unit length, m was moment per unit length. So, this is sigma f into T f, f everywhere refers to film and I am sorry the nomenclature changes again in this T refers to thickness and the substrate S, the subscript S refers to substrate. So, if I say well can you calculate if you know the stresses in the film or in terms of stresses in the film, can you write an expression for force per unit length? You can say yeah sure, if you tell me the thickness of the film, I multiply the stress by the thickness. So, that gives me the force per unit length of the film. Again if you think of the substrate as a disc, the film as another disc, a very thin disc which is stuck to this bigger disc then sigma f into T f gives you the force per unit perimeter of the disc. Is that ok? And then an equal and opposite force acts on the substrate when the sample is under equilibrium. So, this force is equal, but if that is tensile then this is compressive, right. And now what I am going to do is I am going to say that look this force because this is asymmetric, ok. Because this is asymmetric, I am going to split it into two components. Asymmetric with respect to what? With respect to the mid plane, it is acting only at the top surface. So, I am going to say look I can write this as being made up of two parts. One is a uniform compression sigma f t f per unit length which is acting at the mid plane and the other is what are we after? Stress in the substrate to ho gaya right that sigma f t f will give me the stress in the substrate. I can take this this is force per unit perimeter of the substrate now, I can divide it by the thickness of the substrate and I know the uniform compressive stress that is acting at the middle of the substrate. But what is the other thing? This, right? I can separate it into a uniform compressive force which is acting at the mid plane and a bending moment. And how do I get that bending moment per unit length? Well, I take the force and I multiply it by the distance from the neutral plane which is T s by 2. T is thickness, s refers to the substrate, half of that is where this compressive force is acting, ok. Ok, so now I know m, I just simply take this m and put it in the expression that I had, right. So, this m is now this and lo and behold I have an expression which relates curvature to elastic properties of the substrate 
to the stress in the film, the thickness in the film and the thickness of the substrate, right. So, that is your famous Tony's equation that stress in the film, if this is just a rewriting of this expression. Okay. So, stress in the film is equal to biaxial modulus times T s square divided by 6 T f into curvature. You can write it as k here or you can write it as 1 over r. It is the same thing just be careful of the units. One will be in units of length, one will be in units of length inverse. Okay. Questions, please ask. Yeah, so remember I have a substrate, okay. I first only talked about when, when I talked about plate bending, I was simply about talking about taking this plate, applying a moment per unit length and bending it did all my calculations. Now, I am saying that look, when I have a substrate, where is this bending moment per unit length coming from? And it gets a bending moment per unit length because you deposit on it a film which has stresses. The stresses in the film lead to, so if these stresses are tensile, they lead to equal and opposite forces being transferred to the substrate. Okay. Simply from what? From sigma f is equal to 0. There is no external force on this, right. So, what sigma f is equal to 0 karne ke liye, this tensile force in the film leads to compressive forces on the substrate. The only problem is this is not a distributed force acting all along the thickness of the substrate, it is actually acting only along the top surface of the substrate, right. Which is why this force leads to a compression and a bending, right. If I had a force acting along the mid plane, I would have only compression of the substrate and no bending. Do you agree with that? Because it is acting here, there is a moment about the neutral plane and that moment is force into T s by 2, ok. So, I am just splitting up the two effects that this force has. One effect is a compression, okay, which is simply depending on what I you want to write. If you want to write the compressive force, I say well it is just equal and opposite. So, it is sigma f into T f. If you say no, 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 I do not care about forces, I want to know the compressive stress per unit length, then I will take this force and I will divide it by the thickness of the substrate and I will say now this is a compression acting along the mid plane. Why have I shifted it to the mid plane? Because I have separated out the bending moment part, right. So, it is either a force acting off center which is causing both compression and bending, right. And I am saying simply these two actions of the force can be written separately. The compression part is this and the bending part is this, right. And because I have separated out the bending, this compression now is a force which I will write as acting along the neutral plane because bending separately nikal diya hai maine. I think that may be the only part that is may be taking some time to get used to. Is that okay? Yes? So, it is it is basically superposition, right. I take one force and I say this is made up of this part and this part, okay. So, I write that, that moment <coughs> and if that part makes sense to you, then it is simple then it is just substituting it here and please note that here we have explicitly put the sign here, right. Remember we talked about a positive moment and a negative moment. So, we have put the sign there and then you substitute it here. So, you, you already had a minus here and then this minus comes and then the two cancel each other out 
and then everything follows. Okay. Now, there are <coughs> this expression in itself is interesting, right? You are saying that look, you are giving me an expression for stress in the film, and you are telling me that the elastic properties of the film itself play no role in it. So, I give you one sample which is a nickel film deposited on silicon, 500 nanometer nickel deposited on silicon substrate, 300 uh, micron thick silicon substrate or 30 microns thick silicon substrate. On the other hand, I take a soft polymer film, right? much more compliant than nickel, deposit it on the same silicon substrate and you are saying there is no difference between, I mean this, this expression nowhere accounts for the fact that in one case it is polymer and in one case it is nickel, right. And the reason it does not do that is it is saying that look, all that matters is how much is the stress in the film. Because the moment which is causing the bending of the substrate comes only from the force and this distance, right? What is the magnitude of the force and at what distance from the neutral plane is the force acting? So, given a sigma f and given a t f and a substrate thickness, there is no role for elastic properties of the film. Right? Wrong? Why not? Should there be a role for the elastic properties of the film? Stresses are coming in, absolutely. Yes. So, elastic properties will come in if you were trying to convert strains to stresses, that is where they will come in. But the very big assumption that you are making is that. You have done bilayers, right? We teach you about bilayers or bimetallic strips, or they used to teach me, I do not know whether they teach you. Oh, that was the most interesting example. It, you know, that uh, fire alarm or electrical circuit breaker kind of things. So, there are two layers, one which bends a lot and one which does not bend or one which expands a lot and one which does not expand, sorry. That is what causes a huge amount of bending and it either makes a circuit or breaks a circuit depending on whether you are trying to you know stop the flow of electricity or start an alarm. Remember that? Now, in that bimetallic strip, if you remember the solution to calculate how much will it bend, the elastic properties of both the layers come in. Okay? Because that, yeah, that bimetallic strip is about half of one material and half of the other. And you are saying that look, this will bend by some amount, this will bend by, but when I put them together, the bending cannot be controlled by just this or just that, right. Here we are saying that although the film is the source of the bending moment, the presence of the film does not alter the effective elastic properties of the substrate at all. The film substrate sample does not behave like a bimetallic layer with effective elastic properties which are some combination of the substrate and the film. The substrate still bends as if it were a free plate with all that the film is doing is acting as a source of force. Right? The, pre, the elastic properties of the film are not modifying the elastic properties of this sample. Right? And you are making that assumption because you are saying in most applications, I will have a substrate which is significantly thicker than the film, thickness matters. I will also have a substrate which is again in most applications more stiff than the film. Okay? So, I have a thick and more stiff plate on which I am putting a very thin and more compliant layer. 
So, the bending of this plate that bending behavior does not get modified by the presence of this thin layer on top that is an assumption that we are making. What I will show you now are some ways, some rules of thumb by which you can sort of check whether these assumptions are more or less ok or not. Because the mistake that I find students doing is that ok, I have learnt a Stoney's equation. I remember that it lets me relate curvature to stress in the film, but they work on a very different system. You know, maybe they have two layers with very comparable stiffnesses, right? Maybe their substrate is not a thick semiconductor, okay? Their substrate is one metallic layer and their film is another metallic layer and the thicknesses are not very different and the stiffnesses are not very different, but they remember this formula, they measure a curvature and they go ahead and calculate a stress. Measuring curvature is not a problem, both aap experimentally kar sakte right whether you can use that curvature plug it into this equation and get reliably a stress in the film or not is where the assumptions come in so please keep those in mind and at least do these rules of thumb kind of check okay so what are those checks that we are doing where do those checks come from so the first one is so far the expression that we wrote relates curvature to stress in the film, right? So, we said curvature is equal to this is all substrate 6 I think 6 sigma f t f c even I keep forgetting. Right? What if your substrate was like this. This is before deposition of fill. So, it had some curvature k 0 ok and then you went in and you carried out deposition on this substrate. and the curvature changed after deposition ok. It is k 1 after deposition right. What goes into my equation is k 1 related to stress in the film or something else. Think, think, think. So, let me let me make it maybe a little easier to follow. So, let us say the substrate this curvature k 1 the substrate was bent like I have drawn right. Now, you deposit a film on it which has compressive stress ok. So, film under compression do you remember what kind of compression does the film what kind of bending does compression cause. So, you always have to stop and think if the film is under compression what does it actually want to do become bigger than what it is or become smaller than what it is. Why is it under compression? Right. How do you put a film under compression? You take something which is bigger than the substrate, squish it and fit it on the substrate, right. So, it actually wants to be bigger than the current dimension, right. So, when a plate bends, when it bends like this, this is where the film is. Is this surface smaller than or bigger than your neutral plane or bigger than when it was flat? This is smaller, but the film wants to be bigger, no? 
So, it is not going to cause a bending which makes the upper surface even smaller, right. It wants to be bigger, it is trying to push the substrate to somehow accommodate, right. So, the bending that it will cause is going to be like this, because this surface is now slightly bigger than what it was when it was flat, yes, does that make sense? So, compression is going to be like this, Com uh, compressive stresses in the film are going to cause the substrate to bend like this, ok. Vivek, you have a question. Yes, Malak, uh, you said the film wants to be bigger, but if you have a little smaller surface as compared to when it is flat, yeah. isn't that favorable for the film? If it's like no, because that will make the film, now push the film to be even smaller than before. Remember, the film is glued to the substrate. So, if the substrate wants to be smaller, the film will have to be pushed further. So, strains are going to go further up, that is not desirable, right, ok. Film wants to be bigger than what it is right now, that is the meaning of compression, ok. And that will take some thinking and some practicing to get used to that idea. So, now, if you agree that when the film is under compression, the plate is going to bend like this. Let me take an extreme example and say that the bending that the film causes is such that after deposition of the film, my sample looks like this. It can happen, right? which means that the stress in the film caused the substrate to curve by an amount which was exactly equal and opposite of the pre-existing curvature, right. So, you did that, ok. So, Vivek and Rohit are in the same research group. Let us say Vivek does the deposition. And he gives the sample to Rohit saying, can you please do the curvature measurement? And Rohit does the curvature measurement, he knows his Tony's equation, he puts in what value for k? The radius of curvature of a flat surface is how much? Infinity. So, he says, well, k is 0, right? You have a software which does a calculation which is attached to your curvature measurement setup. The software says, you know, k is some 10 to the power minus 16 spits out that the stress in the film is 0. And Vivek happily goes back to his supervisor and says, I just deposited a stress free film, problem solved, because that was the project, right. They were depositing silicon nitride and silicon nitride had stresses and he had to relieve those and he said, voila, done, ok. But then the supervisor says, can you just take a look at this film under a microscope maybe? And he takes the film under a microscope and he finds that there are cracks in the film. And then the supervisor is really annoyed, right? How do you have cracks in a film which has no stresses in it? Why would it crack? Yes or no? So, where did we go wrong in this analysis? What was the mistake? Think, think, think. What did we not account for? The last part is correct, ok. I mean, if you simply say, I mean, putting uh, the, the measurement is correct. He did not make an error in measuring, the substrate is indeed flat. So, where is the mistake? What did the stress in the film do? Did it create zero curvature or did it do something else in this example? It created zero curvature, but from what? 
Well, no, fracture comes later. That fracture part was, you know, just adding masala to the story. So, okay, but uh, but it created a flat surface from something else, right? So the stress in the film created a curvature which was how much minus k zero, right? It did not create zero curvature, it actually induced minus k0 curvature. How do I get minus k0? I get minus k0 if I remember that the stress in the film, I now generalize this equation and I say look stress in the film is related to changes in curvature. With respect to what? With respect to the bare substrate, a substrate which had no film, right? I am sure there is a better term for it than bare substrate, but you understand what I am saying, right? So, the term that should go in here is not exactly k but delta k and if I do that now it is okay because I will say that look this delta k is initial minus final or final minus initial we can figure that out should this be initial minus final or final minus initial what do I want here I want minus k 0 yeah so it should be delta k so some k initial Well, k in, this will give me plus k 0 because k final is 0, right? No, no, I am saying that the curvature due to stress in the film is exactly equal and opposite of this. Okay, so, again think superposition, the substrate was like this, the effect of the film alone is this, exactly equal and opposite of this. So, when you put these two together, you get a flat substrate, flat substrate plus film, right. So, what did the film do? The film basically on top of this, on k0, you did a plus of minus k0 which is what gave me 0. In that sense, I meant equal and opposite. So, it takes this and does this. Okay. Is everybody with me? Did I end up confusing you more? Does this make sense? So, the process when you are doing an experiment always has to be characterize your substrate first. Characterize meaning measure the curvature of your substrate first, then take that substrate deposit the film, bring it back, measure the curvature again. This difference in curvature is the effect of stress in the film. Is that part okay? Okay. Suppose you forgot, you forgot, you did the deposition okay, or you had an intern working with you and the intern was not very careful even though you had told them they still forgot and they deposited the film, right? Do you have a way out? I can tell you a destructive way out that you measure the curvature with the film. Now, strip off the film somehow. Now, you have the bare substrate, go measure the curvature. Again, in this you are assuming that the substrate did not change in the process of stripping the film, right? If you dunked it in some chemical, which etches away part of the substrate, then you can never get the original curvature out of it, right? So, all of these require thinking and care when you are actually doing an experiment. These could cause changes in your, in your result. But the other thing that you can do is measure the curvature after film deposition on one side, okay? 
take the sample back to the deposition system, deposit the exact same film on the other side of the substrate. These two will now cancel each other out. Remember depositing the film and that is going to be my next topic, next thing when I talk about multi layers, right? That remember you had this. substrate of thickness T, right? You deposited this and because this had stresses in it, this exerted a force on the substrate like this, which is what caused bending, right? If you put an exact same film on the other side, what will happen? this, right? The substrate will compress for sure, but the bending moments will cancel each other out again. So, the substrate will go back to whatever curvature it had prior to deposition of the film. The film at the bottom will cancel out the bending effect of the film on the top. And for this sample when you measure the curvature, you are measuring the curvature of the substrate before it had any film. So, that is another way out. Yeah. You do not look very convinced. Question, ask. If, the is very stiff, then? if it is very stiff, then it will not bend. Remember it was stiff even when you deposited the first film, right? The substrate is the same stiffness, right? So, all I am saying is whatever effect this first deposition had, right? Look at the expression for k. You are right, if the substrate is very stiff, then this quantity E over 1 minus nu is very high, that is the substrate stiffness, right? So, for a given stress in the film, the, the curvature will be small but it will be the same amount, right? So, this first deposition will cause let us say the substrate to bend, now I will draw only the substrate to bend like this, right? Some amount first deposition, so some um, this is K1. When you deposit the second film at the bottom, that will cause the substrate to bend by the same amount, but in the opposite direction. So, once again it will be like before, right? This plus ulta will cancel each other out, net will become 0, 0 or whatever curvature it had prior to deposition. You understand? So, this is K1 plus K2 will be equal and opposite of this. is equal to curvature pre-deposition, okay? So, I do not know whether you appreciate this yet or not, but this, this one slide allows me to make many, many, many problems, all with slight deviations, okay? So, Amrita is not here, I think she was thrilled to bits to know that this is an open notes exam where you do not have to memorize anything, but you see I can put deposition in any sequence and you do not have to memorize anything, it is only one equation at the end of the day, right? But you will have to sit and think your way through and this is the thinking that you will have to do. Before you write down anything on a piece of paper and calculate anything, it is helpful to just read and think what is happening, what is the sequence, okay? Good. So, now let us move on to multi layers. <coughs> oh, so this is, okay. So, before I move on to multi layers, I do want to show that what actually happens to the substrate, right? I did mention it that, you know, 
that this is the compressive stress that is acting on the substrate. So, the force divided by the thickness of the substrate. So, that becomes sigma f T f over T s. So, that is the compressive stress and it is bending. So, there is also a stress due to bending right and here again let us go back to the assumption that the substrate is flat it is simpler to explain things like that. So, it also bends and the bending stress is this we derived this and this m is this right. So, the bending stress goes as this. So, now what is the substrate seeing? It is seeing a uniform compression and a variable stress which is this one which comes from bending. So, what it is seeing is the superposition of those two which is this. So, there is a uniform compressive stress in this case which is here and there is a stress due to bending which is compressed if the substrate is bent upward like this then it is compressive above the neutral axis or neutral plane and tensile below the neutral plane right. So, if you <coughs> add these up then this is the Huh. So, this is we are calculating the maximum stress if you add these up and you try to figure out the maximum stress then where would it be maximum? Oh, likha why you just have to tell me which surface it is maximum at T s by 2 right because the maximum value of y is T s by 2, but which surface top surface or bottom surface? Dekho. You can just look at the arrows. It's not that complicated. So the uniform stress is compressive or tensile. The the the. This is what this is compressive, no? the arrows are drawn as compressive. So, I do not know is the figure not ok. This is thickness of the substrate right and the arrows are basically schematically showing you to some extent magnitude and the sign of stress. So, this is 0 right here and this is compression and this is tension right if the plate is bent like this. So, where do you expect maximum stress come on Vivek just say it out loud the top and bottom yeah so they will yeah it is only at the film substrate interface because the ones at the top these two are reinforcing each other right. So, here they are the same sign. So, they add up here they subtract from each other. So, this is the location of the maximum stress ok and you can calculate the magnitude it is this much and see look at this ratio right this is 4 times the film thickness divided by the substrate thickness. And we are this these we are ignoring right we are saying that well the substrate is largely stress free everything is happening to the film stresses in the film they cause bending and so on. And you are ignoring it because again typically this ratio is very small right I have been saying the film is significantly thinner than the substrate. So, when you get numbers just take a look at it and see whether those numbers are making sense or not. Now, this part I do want you to look at it carefully ok. We said in the thought experiment we said I have a substrate 
I have a film which does not match with the substrate and so we pull it right and we stick it to the substrate and it is this stress that I am calculating from the curvature. It is this sigma f that I am calculating correct, but you see finally the film is not sitting on a flat substrate. Two things have happened to the substrate right, we just looked at it. The substrate in a case where the film is under tension, the substrate also got compressed a little bit and it got bent. So, in reality the stresses in the film are not the sigma f that we first calculated in our thought experiment from the mismatch. Do you agree? Because there is a slight compression of the substrate that is what we have just calculated and there is a bending of the substrate and these two add up at the film substrate interface. The changes are the maximum at the film substrate interface. So, what are we doing? We are ignoring these changes or we are saying that look the change caused in the film due to compression of the substrate and due to bending of the substrate is still negligible compared to the stresses that originally existed. Look at these arrows, right. So, so what we are doing in the next slide is we are saying okay, let us at least quantify that, let us satisfy ourselves that this change that I am ignoring is indeed negligible, okay. So, what have we written? That is why it says bent sample here, okay. So, in, in, in any sample which is bent to a radius r, you know how to write the strain, right. It is z over r or you know I can write this as y over r because we have taken been taking y to be along the thickness, right. So, it is y over r. What is r? Or what is y for the film, right. You can write it as T s by 2 plus T f by 2. You can also write it as if you say the maximum change is going to happen at the free surface of the film, distance from the neutral plane. Either ways is ok, does not matter because we are saying that look, because this is so much larger than this, this expression approximates 2 T s by 2 r. This is an approximation, please note this, right, this indicates an approximation. So, if I know the strain due to bending, I can calculate the stress due to bending in the film, right. How do I have I calculated the stress? I am saying this is CL modulus multiplied by strain, where y f is biaxial modulus of the film E f over 1 minus nu f. I know the strain, I multiplied by the biaxial modulus, I get the stress, right. So, now I am saying that look the film had some pre-existing stress which caused this whole bending in the first place and that I know how to calculate that is what I have written in the denominator y s t s square over 6 r t f that is your Stoney's equation. We did not take any bending into account there and then there is there are some stresses which arise because of this bending. What fraction of the pre existing stresses are these bending stresses, right? That is what this ratio calculates, and what does this simplify to? This simplifies to the r goes away. So, this becomes this, and this goes away. So, this simplifies to. Well, I guess the 3 will also go up and this is a very useful metric 
to check before you apply Stoney's equation to calculate stresses from curvature. Because this is saying that look, I understand that the stresses in the film will change when the substrate bends. But those stresses are a negligible fraction of the pre-existing stresses which caused bending. Is that really negligible? You get it from this ratio. 3 times the elastic, the biaxial modulus of the film into thickness of the film divided by the biaxial modulus of the substrate into thickness of the substrate. Right? So, now recall what I said earlier, if you know that you are depositing a very thin compliant film on a stiffer thicker substrate, then probably this is a fairly small number and you are okay. Right? But let us say you take a layer of, you take a steel strip which you have anyways rolled down to a very small thickness, right? You take a you know half a millimeter thick strip of steel and you say I am going to deposit a quarter of a millimeter layer of titanium on top of it and the sample bends. Please do not blindly go and use Tony's equation at least to do this check first. Okay? because the thickness difference is not very large, quarter of a millimeter versus half a millimeter and titanium is stiffer than steel. So, this may not be a negligible number and what that means is by bending the substrate, you may actually be changing the stresses in the film by a large amount, in which case that calculation is not relevant to this scenario anymore. Okay. So, I think, I hope I had some of these numbers and I am taking relatively simpler examples. So, I am saying that let us deposit two kinds of films. One is gold, one is silicon carbide of two different thicknesses 200 nanometers versus 1000 nanometers or 1 micron. Okay. On a substrate, I have intentionally made the substrate really thick. Okay, it is 1 millimeter thick and the substrate is made of silicon. I have already given you the biaxial modulus of silicon and I want you to calculate the ratio of the bending stress to the pre-existing stress right? and I want you to calculate what is the maximum stress in the substrate that we just derived. So, what I will do is Either you can tell me the formulae if any of you still takes down notes or I will go back. This one I remember. Right, that is what this is. Do you remember the expression for the maximum stress in the substrate? T f into sigma f divided by T s. Okay. So, you know the interesting part is that in that maximum stress in the substrate expression, that is simply geometry, the ratio of the two thicknesses. And you, if you see older papers, earlier people used to just take that as a measure and say, oh, this should be 10 percent or this should be below x percent. This is a better measure, this one, because it is not simply a ratio of thicknesses, it is also the stiffnesses also matter, right. A very thick polymer layer deposited on a very stiff substrate, a semiconductor substrate, you may still be able to get away with it, because the ratio of the stiffnesses is very small, right. The bending depends also on the stiffness, not just on the thickness ratios. So, but here I am asking you to calculate both and in the interest of time, I suggest divide it, right. So, if you can tell me what you are calculating, then we will ask other people's wallet, pick one 
and calculate. Okay. Well, then you have to declare what you are picking, no? <laughs> You are calculating the first one, this, ok. So, who is calculating this? You are, third, fourth, among the remaining four, ok. Does not mean the rest of you are just sitting around, you are still calculating. Oh, actually we have two columns, right, yes. So, what are you calculating? The first column is done, second, second this one, the next and the next and then whoever finishes first goes to the last one or we leave it unwritten. Chalo, jaldi se. So, I have given you the biaxial modulus of the substrate, for the film you still have to calculate it E over 1 minus nu. Okay, did anybody calculate the film modulus? Let us put it out there so that everybody's life gets simplified. How, what is it for gold? Five hundred and twelve point eight. Okay. GPA. Okay. Gold, did anybody calculate or you just put everything in the calculator in one this thing? 139? Okay. Okay, chalo. Some answers. What is sigma f? Sigma f is stress in the film. Oh, you do not know the sigma f. Ah, okay, let us assume a sigma f. No, you can actually so calculate it as a fraction of sigma f, then it is just a ratio of thicknesses, right. So, it is 0.1 times sigma f or it is 0 0.02 times sigma f, that is okay. Done? Third row, uh, first one. Third row, the first ratio of bending to pre existing stress, yeah. 1.7 times 10 to the power minus 3, ok. So, for 1000 nanometer, it will simply be 5 times this, right. Eight point five, okay. Uh, uh, silicon again, silicon carbide. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, we will skip the minus because that will depend on the sign. So, 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 sigma f. Then maximum stress in the first second column of first row? Huh, so 1000 nanometer gold. No, 200. 200 nanometer gold, okay. 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 sigma. Yeah, because it is just thicknesses now, right. Hmm. 4.64 into 10 to the power minus 4. 4.64 to 10 to the power minus 4. Minus 1. 4. 4. Okay. So, again gold, the, the other thickness. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 
point zero zero four sigma f here point zero zero four okay so that is four into ten to the power minus three we just left with this thousand nanometer gold who is doing the calculation or we just do 5 into 4.64 right what is 5 into 4.64 20 23.2 okay so first right what does this tell you that look this bending the stresses induced in the film due to bending are at least in this example they are about a thousand times less than the pre existing stresses a thousand times or more i mean they are sigma f over a thousand or sigma f over 10000 okay that much fraction uh they this also tells you right because it is just the ratio of geometries that of course the changes are typically less in thinner films and slightly more in thicker films <coughs> similarly the maximum stress that is induced in the substrate is significantly smaller than the stress in the film that caused all the bending and the compression and whatever. So, it is ok to say that all the stress resides in the film and we ignore whatever is happening in the substrate. It is ok to ignore whatever is happening in the substrate. It is also ok to ignore the changes in the stress in the film due to bending. Okay. Now, let me show you a couple of other interesting examples. What happens when you start depositing multi layers? Because often in practical applications, you will deposit at least two layers, sometimes three layers, right? And I think Vivek, somebody in your group was, was working on these multi layers. I know Ashwini was looking at multi layers. Uh, I do not know if somebody else was also looking, but you could easily have multiple layers deposited on top of a film. So, now what happens, right? So, this is the schematic that you have a substrate which is again silicon. You deposited the first film and this sigma m, m here refers to metal. So, let us say you had silicon you deposited copper on it and then you said well I do not want this copper to come into contact with the environment because something will happen it will become dirty its conductivity will, will go down. So, I am going to deposit a passivation on top of it. right? The passivation could be anything, it is often something which will not react with the environment. So, it will be like a nitride or a carbide. Okay. So, you deposit a passivation on the film. What does that mean? What that means to the substrate is that it had one layer first, right, which had some stresses and those stresses led to a force per unit length at the top of the substrate. Now, on top of that you have another layer which also has stresses in it. right? So, what does the substrate see? So, there was a film I mean I will I'll probably repeat this, but anyway. So, there is a force associated with it right f 1 sigma f 1 t film 1. There is a force associated with this as well f 2 is equal to sigma f 2 t f 2 right. These are forces I mean these are vectors they have directions at the very least tension versus compression will have different signs right what does the substrate see and i'm just 
drawing it like this does not mean it is always compressive, right. But what the substrate sees, right. Remember, we the, the way we did the math was to say that look, the film as far as the substrate is concerned, the film is nothing but a source of force. A source of force which is asymmetric with respect to the mid plane of the substrate. Hence, there is a bending as well as a compression or a tension, right. So, as far as the substrate is concerned, if the uh, some of the assumptions that we discussed in the previous slide still continue to hold, what the substrate will now see is the sum of force due to the first film plus force due to the second film. These could have opposite signs, in which case the force goes down. These could have the same sign, in which case the force and hence the bending goes up. Okay. So, then what the next slide says is it's basically saying that okay, so the effect of the passivation on the substrate is going to follow along the exact same lines as what we did for the film that there is a force per unit length right and there is a bending moment. So, which is this due to the passivation and we will treat it the exact same way except that you could still now do this analysis to say that okay does this alter things for the interlayer a whole lot? Do I need to worry about it? Why do things alter for the interlayer? Because the substrate gets compressed or expanded more or less and the substrate gets bent, right. So, what are the changes for the interlayer? Well, this gives you the compression in the substrate due to deposition of the passivation. This gives you the bending of the substrate due to the deposition of the passivation, right. And you are saying that look, how much is the strain due to each of these in the metallic layer which is sitting on top of the substrate. So, I had a substrate, I had one film on top of it and there was some compression and some bending and we already analyzed that those changes are very, very small, right. Now, you are saying that oh, oh, we did not stop here, right. We put one more layer and that layer further caused let us say some more compression and some more bending, right. This film which is sitting on top of that substrate, how much did the stresses in this film change? because this is my layer of interest, right. That is what I am trying to estimate, how much did the stresses in this layer change when I deposited this layer, because it caused some compression of the substrate and some bending of the substrate. The expressions are the same as before, right. So, <coughs> this is compression and this is bending, what have I written, what expression is this? What is this term? This is the stress in the substrate due to passivation, right. And I am dividing it by the biaxial modulus of the substrate, right. So, this is sigma s divided by y s which gives me the compressive strain in the substrate due to the uniform compression, right. This is what 6 over T s square into this into this, this is the strain due to bending or the stress sorry due to bending. And again I am dividing it gives me the strain due to bending, okay. 
So, I am saying if I put those together, this gives me the net strain in the substrate due to bending. And what am I saying that look, the strain in the metal film, upar sab jage mene subscript metal likh rakhi hai, calculation mein substrate ke le kar rahi hu. Kyo? Because I am saying that look, the metal film is glued to the substrate and we are saying that the substrate is free to respond in whichever way it wants to the deposition of this passivation. The metal film has to conform to whatever the substrate is doing. So, I am doing the calculation for the substrate and I am saying that substrate will compress as much as it want to, it will bend as much as it want to, the metal film has no say in it it will do whatever the substrate is doing. Hence, the right hand side has y s in it and not y film. The strain in the film will be whatever is the strain in the substrate. From that strain in the film, if you wanted to calculate the stress, you will multiply it with the elastic properties of the metal, which is what I have done in the last step. Okay? Yes? Do you recognize this? This is from two slides ago, na? the maximum stress in the substrate, it is that, except that you are now calculating with, with respect to the passivation. Passivation ki vajay se substrate mein kya hua, okay? And as far as strains are concerned, dimension changes are concerned, whatever happens to the substrate happens to the film, right? The same dimension change because they are glued and the substrate is dominating. The substrate decides what dimensions to change. Given this change in dimension of the film, what additional stresses arise in the film will be the strain in the film which is equal to as you calculated above, but now multiplied with the biaxial modulus of the metal of the film. So, you calculate the stress. Okay? So, you can do this estimation and once again, if you are depositing multi layers, you should check that these are still small quantities. Okay? If you start with a film which had say 100 mega Pascals of stress and you have deposited 5 more layers on top of it and those 5 more layers have already caused changes worth 50 mega Pascal, right? then we cannot keep on claiming that array the changes are negligible, the changes are negligible. Okay? We said, let me walk you through the sequence one more time. We said, and I will assume a flat substrate again. I have a flat substrate. I deposit a film. The film causes, or rather, I need a bendable substrate. So, this is my substrate now, and this is my film. I deposit a film. The film causes bending of the substrate. I measure this bending, use it to calculate stresses in the film. Right, and say that look any change in stress in the film which happened because the substrate got bent is negligible. You have done that calculation. Okay, you have calculated that ratio. Please do go back and look again at today's lectures and notes. You said this ye jo bending ki wajay se jo isme stress change hua hai, wo negligible. Hai. So, the stresses that I calculated are the original stresses which caused bending. Okay? Now, you say well, I really urgently need to deposit one more layer on top of this. Assume this is a full layer. So, I put one more layer on top of this and let us say that causes some more bending. right? And I check and I say well, the change in stress in the film due to this bending is also negligible, that is the check that is written here. Okay? But it could be that then you go ahead and deposit something more, something more, something more. 
you have to keep checking that you know your sample has become this. Can you still claim that the stress is in the active layer or the change in stress in the active layer due to these depositions is negligible or not? Check for yourself. Okay. Same thing is true with curvature measurement. You measure the curvature of this, you deposit this, you measure the curvature again, K1 minus K0 gives you the stress in this film. Having measured this, you deposit a second layer, you measure a K2, K2 minus K1 gives you the stress in this layer. Okay you deposit a third layer. So, if you have benchmarked the curvatures from, from the beginning and measured the curvatures after every layer, you can take that delta k and attribute it to that layer provided the other assumptions are not violated. Is that ok? Does that make sense? Ok. Oh. Well, okay. I think as far as curvature is concerned, this is okay. This was just sort of a summary that I had put of what I have already told you that for the substrate, it is just summation of forces provided the thicknesses do not become too large, the stresses do not become too large. This is where I wanted to transition to the tutorial problem. So, here is what I am going to do. Uh, I will I will talk to Professor Jaya, we can we can stop, I mean today's lecture is done, as far as today's lecture is concerned we are done. I have completed whatever I wanted to teach you about curvature, its measurement and its applications. Okay? Uh, what I have not done is shown you how to solve that one anisotropic <coughs> elasticity problem in the current curve, in the current tutorial. I will check with Professor Jaya how she wants to proceed. If she wants to utilize the next couple of lectures just talking about X-ray diffraction, you can complete the second tutorial minus that one problem and submit it. We will read, we will do that problem as and when I come back and talk about anisotropic elasticity. Okay? And I will upload one more tutorial which is completely on curvature measurement and calculating stresses in films.